Hey everybody, thanks for watching this next Premiere on Script video. And in this one, we're gonna go over something that is crucial to all of our Premiere workflows, and that's creating sequences. In a previous movie, I shared with you guys how to create bins and move bins around, and in that movie, I also discussed how to create a sequence. However, whenever you run the code to create a sequence, you were prompted with some user interaction on what type of sequence you'd like to create. So it would look something like this. And then in here, this would pop up. You would choose whatever your custom one is or one of these presets. Click on that and it would create your sequence. But when you're creating sequences for maybe tens or depending on how big your script is and how important it is, maybe hundreds of sequences that you need to create, you don't want the user to have to deal with that so many times or do it over and over again. And with our workflows, a lot of us have sequences that are predefined, sequences that we need them to be a certain way. So what we can do is create a sequence preset. This has got the file extension .sq preset and then run some other code that will allow us to create that without user interaction. So this video is going to be pretty simple. We're going to cover two lines of code in this, but each line has a little bit of a story to it. So the first line is this app.enableQE, and you need to run this if you're going to run this create sequence from preset function. Now, what is this? What does this mean? Well, you might see it if you're jumping around the sample code a little bit, or you're on the forums asking, you know, about how to do certain things. Sometimes you might get suggested to run this code to enable something called QE. And what is QE? Well, in the blog post, I'm going to share a link to a forum post titled QE, what is this rabbit hole? Uh, where someone asks the question of what is QE? It's confusing. There's no documentation on it. Um, what are we dealing with here? And what QE is, which you can see in the answer down here, is it stands for quality engineering. It is an API that's undocumented and not supported by Adobe staff. And it's kind of like a staging place from what I can tell, a staging place for them to add functionality that they're testing but might not be super reliable. And then once they test it enough and figure that it's good enough for people to use consistently, and then they'll move it over to the official and the supported API, which you would access just by going through app.project.whatever. So check out the blog post if you want to read through this. It's really good background on uh, what this whole QE thing is. But for now, to continue on with this video, all you need to know is that in order to do this, you need to enable QE. Now, in the second line of code, we'll talk about this. Instead of starting at app, we're going to start at QE. And then we're going to go project, new sequence. And the first argument we're going to put in there is a name. We need to give our sequence a name. And this could, you know, right now I have it just as example sequence, but you could, you know, set it to a variable, pop that in there, and then have it change as you increment numbers up. Do whatever you want. Uh, you could base it off of an array of names so that you have all different sequence names. But that's pretty simple. The next part is where it gets a little more complicated, and this is where you have to give Premiere a path to your SQ preset. And when I started doing this, I was like, okay, great. I can create sequences from presets, but what is an SQ preset? And if you come in here and you create a new sequence, you'll see these custom ones down at the bottom, and these are all based off of an SQ preset. So one way to make this is to just go into settings and, you know, set these up to whatever you want them to be. Um, uh, then save your preset, name it something, and then you'll see it populate down in the custom bin once it loads. There we go. Now, another way to do this that uh, I prefer is when I've created a sequence and I have you know, my media in it and it's working well for me and that's, you know, the one that I want to go with. What you can also do is come over here and go to create preset from sequence in the timeline panel. And this will give you that same pop-up box and we'll name this example one. Okay, so we just created two SQ presets. Now, the next tricky part is where do these live? And you can see from this file path here, it shouldn't matter whether you're on a Mac or a PC, if you go to your user documents folder and you go to Adobe 
Premiere Pro, your version number of the current Premiere you're on. So right now I'm on 2018, 12. Then your profile, your settings, custom, and you'll see all of these SQ presets in here. You can then copy these and paste these over to a new directory, uh, maybe more general for your team, or you could put this in your panel directory. We'll go over linking to that in a future movie. And so over here, you can see that I, uh, in my you know blog seven folder here, I have two SQ presets, a 720 and an example number four. I come back over here, I'm, I'm linking to the example number four, but there's one more thing that we have to discuss before you can make this work. And that is that it's pretty straightforward to put a file path in on a Mac. It tricked me up a little bit when I started doing this on a PC, because you have to do two slashes, two backslashes in between each one of your you know folder levels in order to get this to work. I was trying to do just one and it wasn't working. If you want to know why this is, I mean, I don't know why, but uh, in the sample code, you can go to this get sep function, which is, you know, for getting the separator. And so on Mac, you're going to need this forward slash. And on PC, you're going to need two backward slashes. And I don't know why this is, but it's just the way it is to link to files and extend script. We can see that we're going to make a sequence called example sequence from this preset. And when we run it, there it is. That easy. And you could do this over and over again as many times as you want. Um, if we wanted to, say, change this up and go quince number and then say put in, um, and then put in A and then make this a for loop. So let's say for then what this should do is create 10 sequences for us pretty instantaneously, all under the same sequence preset. And we'll see if that works. And there you go. You have all of your sequences created right there that quickly. And then if you want to take this a little bit further, you can create multiple presets and then set conditionals, um, if statements so that, you know, if your media is one way, make a preset this way. If it's another way, make a preset this way. And it will remove all user interaction from your script and make your automation a whole lot quicker. So please keep an eye out for the next blog video I'm going to post. In this next one, I'm going to talk about slightly back to the HTML panel side of things and talk about transferring information from your HTML and JavaScript in your panel over to extend script so that you can pass variables or functions over into your extend script interpreter. Once we kind of connect these two, this extend script area and this HTML area, then we can start creating more interactive panels with dialog boxes and check boxes, which will make them a lot more customizable to your workflow and, and open up the possibilities of what you can do with them. So once we get through that, we can then go into a kind of bigger, more full project video about how to create a full functioning panel from all the way from the HTML, the JavaScript, and the extend script.